The Quantum HD Field Retrofit Kit. Retrofit your existing Quantum LX or Quantum 4A without removing the existing panel. Featuring a large, intuitive touchscreen interface, pin-based security system, user action tracking, World Wide Web-based remote access, remote panel-to-panel -panel networking, all future software features, free and easy software upgrades, and a quick means to current technology. The Quantum HD Field Retrofit Kit, the easiest, most affordable retrofit available. Hello, I'm John Cosner with Frick by Johnson Controls. In today's video, we'd like to both introduce as well as demonstrate the installation of our new Quantum HD Field Retrofit Kit. This field retrofit kit will enable you to easily and very affordably retrofit a Quantum LX controller or a Quantum 4A controller in the 22 by 18 by 10 inch enclosure. When you receive this kit, you'll, you'll immediately notice that it's been very smartly packed with everything that you need to do the retrofit process. It is also packed in different trays, as you can see on the front of the box, which then allows you uh, to go from tray to tray and do the retrofit in, in, a, in a neatly order. Uh, when you open up, you also see that you've received a panel test report. This uh, shows that the, the uh, kit itself was comprehensively tested and passed that test. You also receive a CD, which covers the manuals. It also comes with a page by page uh, set of drawings. Each sheet of the drawing covers each tray as you move through the kit. So follow the drawing step by step. You also will get templates because you will have to drill some holes in the door to, uh, uh, to, to fit the, uh, the new display box onto. You also get to drill those holes. We do provide you with a set of drill bits, both a pilot bit as well as a final bit, as well as the center punch in order to make those holes in the door. Due to electrical static discharge possibilities, we also provide you with a disposable anti-static wristband to uh, eliminate any possibilities of damaging the boards during the installation. And also, since we want to allow you to be able to save the set points from a Quantum LX and restore onto the Quantum HD once, it's, uh, once you're finished with the kit, we do provide you with a USB thumb drive for that purpose. Some of the earlier Q4 processor boards did not have a direct USB port, so we also provide you with this adapter in order to save those set points and then restore those set points. Uh, at this time, we will go ahead and uh, save the set points of the Quantum LX so that we can then restore them onto the Quantum HD. Okay, prior to actually beginning our retrofit, we want to go ahead and save our control set points from the Quantum LX controller. Uh, if you do have a Quantum 4A that you're doing the retrofit in or on, uh, you actually will have to manually record the set points. We cannot save those from a Quantum 4A and restore them onto the Quantum HD. But if you do have the Quantum LX, we can do that. So basically, you're going to go into menu and then go to service and then select software maintenance. And then you have several options that appear on the screen. The first one is save set points, which is item one. So you simply press one. And then we'll enter in a number that we can reference later for this set of set points. And for this purpose, I'm gonna use number six and hit enter. Now the set points will, are saving at this, this point. And once the set points are saved, We'll select item number six to exit the program, which we'll do now, and the panel will reboot. Once the panel is rebooted, uh, at the time we can go ahead and power down. We can do our lockout tagout processes to remove uh, all sources of power to the control panel, and then we'll go ahead and commence with the retrofit. Okay, now that we've completed our lockout and tagout of all power sources to the Quantum LX controller, we want to refer to page two of the installation instructions for the removal of all the components that we are going to replace as the process of retrofitting this panel into a Quantum HD controller. Uh, first off, we want to remove the analog board. And to do that, you have to remove all of the existing sensor cables that are wired to that board. Once those are removed, then we will disconnect the DC harness at the top of the board. 
And then once we have that, we also need to disconnect the current transformer connection. And then using a small screwdriver, you want to turn these nylatch standoffs one corner turn counterclockwise. And then that will free those up so that you can now remove the analog board. And we can set that off to the side. Once that board is removed, we will now start over at the at the far right side to remove the DC harness from the controller. We also have to unplug that from the digital board. And we'll let that come down. And we'll also have to remove the 24 volts DC. And now we can just let that hang down, to, uh, down toward the floor. The next step will be to remove or cut tie downs that secure the harness to the display and processor mounting plate. And once those are cut, we will, uh, at that point, remove the board. Actually, first we'll have to unplug all the connections. At this point, we can remove the uh, processor board by removing all the lock nuts. Now we can remove this assembly and set that down to the side. Uh, the next thing we will do is remove the power supply. And again, simply have to remove the lock nuts. At this point, we basically removed everything that we need to remove uh, to complete the retrofit. Uh, and at this point, we're going to go ahead and close the door, and we can remove the keypad uh, from, the, from the door and then proceed on to uh, page three of the instructions. Okay, the next step of the process will be to remove the keypad from the front of the, the door of the Quantum LX controller. This is an easy process, basically uh, getting under one corner and then do a continuous peeling motion until the keypad is removed. and we'll set that off to the side. Uh, you will see that you have some amount of glue residue that will be left on the door, and you'll want to clean this off before proceeding on to the next step. Um, you can use any commercial industrial grade adhesive uh, remover, which you can basically find at any local hardware store. Once that's removed, then we can move on to the next step of installing our template and marking and drilling our holes. Okay, before we actually install our template to mark and drill our holes, we recommend that you place a shop towel in the lower portion of the enclosure in order to catch any drill filings for a quick, easy cleanup. Okay, the next step of the process will be to install our template, mark, and drill our holes. The kit comes with two templates, one for the Quantum 4A, the other for the Quantum LX, which is the controller we're doing today. To place the template, simply place the foam pad inside of the pre-existing uh, display, the hole for the pre-existing display. And once it's centered, then all you have to do is simply tape down each side. And once you have that secured, then you'll simply take a center punch to each one of the crosshair points and mark your hole. And you'll continue that process for the rest of the uh, holes that we're going to mark and drill. The next step, at this point, we're ready to begin our installation of our components to retrofit this former Quantum LX controller to a Quantum HD controller. Uh, we're gonna get into tray two, which does house the display box. Now that we have our holes drilled, you simply turn the box in the proper position and place the threaded studs through the holes drilled into the door. While holding this in place, you open the door and then you will install a lock nut onto the first stud. And you're going to torque this down to 18 pound inches of torque. And you want to do a cross pattern type process for tightening. Before installing any of the circuit boards, the recommended place to attach the ground end of the static band is right here on the AC line filter. 
At this time, we will get into tray three to install the Quantum 5 processor board as the next step to our process. These boards are actually shipped in static bags and you simply place the board over the four studs and then you will shift that all the way to the left and secure using the four lock nuts provided. Okay, now that we've secured the last fastener that holds the processor and interface board assembly in place, we need to connect our touchscreen cable, our inverter light cable, as well as our display cable. Starting with the display cable, one side of the display cable has a metallic edge. That will line up with the metallic edge uh, on the processor board. And you'll fill that seat. Uh, remove the tape. And then the next thing will be to uh, apply the touchscreen cable. It's an 8-pin cable, plugs into this 8-pin connector. You'll notice there's a red line on the ribbon cable. You want to make sure that red line is at the bottom. And once that's seated, the next step will be to route the inverter cable up and behind the interface board. And then that plugs in here to the inverter output port which is just to the right of the battery. Okay, the next step of the process will be to install the analog board. And you'll simply place the new analog board over the NILATCH standoffs, and you'll press that into place. Then you will secure the board by inserting a screwdriver into the slot and turning one quarter turn clockwise on each of the six. Once you're finished with the other four, then you will start plugging in your analog sensor cables into the corresponding terminals. Okay, now we'll go ahead and install our power supply and our DC communications harness. Uh, first, want to place the power supply over the studs on the door that were used to mount the previous power supply. On the one stud, we want to mount a P-clamp prior to installing our lock, lock nut and then we'll go ahead and proceed to install another P-clamp and our next lock nut. These P-clamps are a quarter inch and will be used to uh, contain the harness as it's run across the front of the door. Okay, we went ahead and installed the DC power harness. Some of the key points um, as you follow along with the instructional drawings, uh, basically you're going to route up through these P-clamps plugging into the interface board uh, and also there's a ground point here. There's a ground wire that we need to make sure that we secure. Uh, this is the power input for the processor board. The I.O. communications plugs into uh, COM port 4. Uh, going back into the panel, the harness routes up, uh, is secured by these uh, P-clamps which are provided uh, in the kit and goes over for analog board 1, digital board 1, and continues over, in case you're using digital board 2, uh, the connection for that is already in place. Uh, also, if you were to do analog board 2, this connection is already in place. So if you add those boards, then you just simply plug in that harness and power up the board. The processor will recognize them, and then you'll be able to utilize uh, that I.O. as well. At this point, um, we can go ahead and close the door, power up the panel, and restore the set points that we saved from the LX previously. Now that we're powered up as a Quantum HD controller, the next thing you'll want to do is to restore the set points that you previously saved from the Quantum LX controller. The first thing to do is to insert the USB thumb drive into our external USB thumb drive port, and then you will need to log in to the service level. And once you're logged in, you'll select the menu, service. Once on the service page, select software, and then restore set points. You'll go through a, a process here where it recognizes the card and you'll select restore and the file number that we saved was file number six and you'll press OK. And it'll ask if you want to restore your calibration data. You should go ahead and do that, so select yes. Now we're restoring the set points. Once that's complete, press exit and yes that you want to exit and there'll be a, a reboot process here 
uh, and to, to recognize the new set points and then allow you to operate your machine. Once the reboot process is complete and all your set points are restored, you can restart your compressor. That concludes the retrofit process and we just like to ask if you have any questions or need any further information on this retrofit kit, contact your Frick brand sales representative. Thank you for watching.